if things couldn't get worse from some of my colleagues or some of my people and friends out there in mainland Europe, it looks like Dutch clubs are being forced to close at night time as government orders a three week lockdown. I was thinking about the other day about lockdowns and shit and how drab and dreary that whole occasion was. But I also was one. I was also kind of thinking to myself, you know what? I've kind of memory hold that time. I'm not sure if you guys have done the same, but I've essentially memory hold the entire lockdown experience and I've kind of maybe summed it up to a or maybe yeah, summed it up to maybe a couple of weeks. But I don't really remember the entirety of it because I don't want to remember it because it was such a drab, dreary, and negative time in most of our lives. So I can only imagine how discouraging saddening and depressing it must be to go through another lockdown again especially a three week one because there's no difference between a three week and a month you might as well just do four weeks why not especially these ones because most likely they'll be like it's three weeks we're going to have a review after the second week but most likely they'll extend into four anyway so they're just trying to again they play these weird little games with you to kind of um make sure the public doesn't kind of panic and get freaked out which is always annoying i much prefer when governments are just straight up and honest with their pop with their with their citizens but you know i guess they kind of have to do these things because they have to i don't know whatever but it's an article courtesy of ra dutch club forced to close at night time as government orders a three-week lockdown the restrictions come into effect at 6 p.m on november 13th so they've been already in effect for a couple of days it says here in a press conference earlier today prime minister mark root um, confirmed that the three-week lockdown will come into effect at 6 p.m tomorrow this week the netherlands hit a record number of new cases of covid19 again cases not deaths as they always do and um, this is yet another blow to night clubs which not only opened um, late september last week um, which, only, which only reopened late September. Last week, the face marks have once again made a mandatory into places. The odd thing as well, the saddening thing about Holland, if I'm not mistaken, they had a brief reopening, which is when Dixon played that amazing set in that club in Holland. I forgot what it was called, but it's a video of it online where I think a dude in a wheelchair gets picked up and he's crowd surfing and shit, right? It's fucking great venue, really amazing looking. Then I think a couple of days after, they get into lockdown again. So just as though they're kind of getting their feet wet and getting back into the clubbing space, they didn't have to kind of get locked down again. And then this is another thing as well. Like I guess they reopened and now they're getting locked down again. So it's just kind of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, the partial lockdown means bars, restaurants and non-essential shops will have to close between 6 and 7 p.m sports events can't have spectators and stands and people are encouraged to work from home as much as possible a maximum of four visitors are home are recommended schools theaters and cinemas will remain open the government's website has a full list of new restrictions according to reuters the problem is 85 percent of dutch population has now been fully vaccinated 85 percent sorry that's a lot a lot more than i expected it to be um the netherlands is now a, the first country western country to western europe to go back to lockdown regulations just since the summer the guardian reports and this is the problem i have with it the main problem I have is that for the most part, none of this stuff works, isn't it? And there's never an end in sight. I've not heard one person so far say, or you know, people, especially in government, say, hey, we're going to do this thing. We're going to do this, instill this measure, instill this mandate. And the hope is the kind of carrot at the end of this is that once this is done, you won't have to wear a face mask ever again. Right. This is the kind of prize at the end of it. It's never that. It's always just this understanding or this kind of, you know, quiet understanding underlying understanding that we're just going to have to live in this perpetual face mask wearing covid vaccine booster society right where there is no measure that can be put into place that's ever going to eradicate the virus but then there's always these kind of stipulations in place that also prevent you from kind of living your own life it's just like oh it's just too much man because lockdowns don't work we know that already they don't work right largely they don't work they kind of help to kind of stem the tide a bit and obviously help with limiting the cases, which obviously helps to limit the amount of hospital admissions to make sure they're not overflowed. You know, the standard rhetoric people keep saying again and again. But in terms of stopping and holding the virus, it does nothing. It does absolutely nothing, right, in the grand scheme of things, because we still have to go into lockdown, right, in the grand scheme of things. The masks as well are the same sort of thing. They help, but to a certain extent. Same with the vaccine. It helps, but to a certain extent. I guess vaccines are more so, so it's not like a lethal, so you're not being administered until between now has to be on the ventilator and shit because that's not fun, and so you don't lose your sense of smell and shit, and people still have not recovered from that, or your sense of taste. Cool. But in terms of con categorically stopping the virus, these are the things that don't happen, and for the most part, 
lockdowns are maybe the most ineffective of all those measures mask there's a big argument for them to be had um vaccines big argument to be had for them even boosters a big argument to be had even though i'm not going to get one i definitely agree with that one but lockdowns are f very very clumsy very draconian and very ineffective they don't do anything if anything they kind of help to maybe drive dissent right they make people be a little bit more um willing to break the rules a little bit more risque look what happened with playgraves a lot of the reason why playgraves happened was because it was so fucking drab negative and dreary right you'd go out to parts of london especially places that are meant to be busy like central london or where you maybe go to your main shopping area strip wherever it may be and it was a complete you know desert like no one was out right no shops were open it was it was quite depressing to see because immediately you started thinking about the amount of people that had lost out on jobs people that weren't able to support their families all these sort of things are kind of running through your head so it was no surprise that some people who had the means to or maybe it wasn't even means to there's a lot of people in the beginning of playgrounds who were putting on parties in tulum and places in bali and shit right um in places in mexico and bali because they were rich and they could kind of escape the drib and drab you know a reality of the uk but if you didn't have the money people were still putting on house parties and warehouse raves and shit and you know playgrave type events just so they can kind of unplug and get away from the cold heart reality that they're going through day by day so that in, in my opinion was a direct result or consequence of lockdowns because people couldn't handle being under lockdown daily so they needed some respite and the only respite you could get was by getting blackout drunk and super high listening to really loud electronic music that would be the best way to go and do it so i think lockdowns just encourage bad behavior they encourage people to kind of cut corners to go out of their friends houses and organize house parties and just you know just do everything you're not meant to do in a lockdown um i don't know man but then again in this in this fact in the, if you're the government what do you do you see numbers going up and in general most people especially jobs i think i've seen this we've all kind of seen examples of this now with the serious succession which is absolutely incredible but what we're seeing with the series of succession especially in this season season three is that they've got an incident happening that's essentially their version of a me too or cancel culture sort of event and we're seeing it from the perspective of a global organized a global corporation right and we're seeing that really all of the things that bother the public in terms of morality principles ethics and whatever it may be they don't really play any part in the decision makings of these corporations most of it is all just self-preservation they're all trying to make sure they keep their jobs they're trying to make sure they don't sully their reputations and no one wants to be left with a kind of smudge or a mark or a cloud over their name so for the most part if you're the government and you're trying to you know make sure that you don't go out you know you don't go you don't you don't crash out or you don't kind of go out of this or you don't be remembered in history books as the prime minister mayor governor or whoever that was responsible or kind of presided over the covid you know approach to your country and then you know many many thousands of people died maybe in the millions no one wants that on their books so they'll do whatever they can to ensure that they don't have that on their book which might mean doing stuff like you know wide sweeping you know restrictions like lockdowns or whatnot just to ensure that they kind of stem the flow in some way shape or form because that's the only thing they know how to do um but it's just funny man all these it's funny that on one side all these kind of tired and burnt out methods to kind of combat the pandemic or to combat the virus are okay and widely accepted but the moment people start talking about stuff like iver uh, ivermectin and all that sort of shit it then goes into the kind of cuckoo land conspiracy theories bro science sort of relate don't get me wrong the people that talk about ivermectin again are annoying but it's just funny how on one side it's it's okay to talk about boosters and vaccines and lockdowns but on the other side talk about alternative medicines and you know vitamin d and working out and all that joe rogan sauna shit suddenly people start looking at you like a bit of a kook um i don't know but again um thoughts and feelings go out to my netherland brothers and sisters hope you guys are keeping your head up for those of you that care about night left and clubbing hopefully you're keeping your head up for those of you that don't care you're probably going to think it's a welcome respite especially for such a densely populated city you're probably willing and happy that you're getting some sort of break from having people breathe down your necks constantly which is probably great but for everybody else who kind of survives off the heartbeat of the nightlife that runs through that city it's going to be a dark time for you isn't it it's going to be a dark dark time but hopefully you get out of it on the other side Hopefully you get out of it the other side.